I don't know, there's lots of glitches in this bitch. Alright, well listen, um... You know, I don't want to go out drinking. So, I'm kind of like, I'm trying not to waste my time. But I want to tell you a story. I got another little story I can tell you. You know, uh, we're always following this, um... I do a lot of Kundalini stuff, you know, where there's following of the seven. There's also another way of uh, listening to the Bible, uh, 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 of listening, uh, but there's another way that the Bible is written, um, <clears throat> which follows right along with some of these stories, but it's really, really interesting. When there's a story in Ma uh, is it Matthew or Mark, how can you keep track of how many of the stories are of it? Uh, I should have wrote it down. But I'm off the cuff. Get, I, you know, like I said, I'm, I don't know that I want to go get have catch a buzz on. Uh, it's Wednesday, and you know, it's my day off, night off. So, so let's say, let's say that this is my problem. I have a problem. And it's confronting me. And that's what we usually would do with our problems. You know, let's say I'm an alcoholic, you know, which I ain't. Um, I just don't like getting headaches when I'm done with it. I love drinking. I really do. I have fun. But, you know, something can befall us. Something at any time. A storm can come into our life. And then, you know, it just throws us all off whack and things like that. And so the story about Jesus, when he calms the storm, you know, it's, um, you know, they give him a lot of praise, a lot of magic in that story, a lot of magic, okay? But, um, you know, we just need to know that, you know, if you read this, read, you don't have to read into it in anything, but if you read the Bible, if you read this passage correctly, you would see that it was about the four, the five stages of meditation. It's really four stages, but when you get to the top, the, the cleansing part, you know, that's the new mind. That's the new wine. That's the, that's the, oh, oh, you know, this is when something is effectively challenged to what has come against you and has obliterated it. Okay, this is something in the mind. You know, you'd love to go to a doctor. Some people pay thousands of dollars a month. Uh, for them to regurgitate some of the stuff that they've got in their mind to see that this doctor could try to fix it in some way. You know, the doctor is inside of you. You know, a lot of, well, that's where the physician come. Physician heal thyself. Well, anyways, as that story goes, <coughs> it's like a Noah's Ark story where all of the men are in the boat. And, you know, with Noah's Ark, you know, we, let's kill a couple of Let's kill a couple parables with one stone. But the idea is that you are the vessel. You have always been the vessel. You are the Ark of the Covenant. You are all of these things, you know. Uh, the God resides in you. You're the tabernacle, you know. Uh, the, you're the gold and the silver. He's the gold, we're the silver. Uh, I think we're brass before we turn silver, you know, because that, that draws when we go up here, the action against what goes against us and afflicts us, burns all that crap out of us and makes us gold, you know. So anyways, that's, a, that's just another story. Wow, there's so many things. Like this is how I said, you're, you're always mixing scripture when you're telling things. No shit. No shit. All right. But anyways, everybody's on a boat, you know, with no, it's the whole family, you know. And to tell you the truth, those those twelve people, that's you, that's all of you, the you know, the brethren, the brethren, the five, you know, is the is our skin, that's the, the brethren, alright? Our brothers. Okay, did you see that? That's the symbology behind that. So all of us are in this boat together. And it be the wind or the storm is pushing in. The you know, they're already out to sea, so they've already detached. They've detached from land. They've taken earth. All right. So this is this is the four stages of consciousness, and it's about uh, let's talk about the four and then the effects of the four. Earth is our mind. Our lower mind is earth. It's also what's around us. This is you know beta conscious. This is earth. The lowest consciousness is earth. 
and then when you cross over into the water, you're into, uh, we're into the second stage of conscious water is the truth. And then you're rose, raised up into the air. And then eventually the top where the infant, where the boom, that's fire, that's bam, that's the, that's, that's the release of this delta frequency that, uh, <clears throat> that we call God's wrath. All right. This is where, you know, Israel is, you know, is changed into a new Israel. This is a, a new Jerusalem and everything. You're one way before, and then you're new after. You you understand, you know, you're a worthless, worthless sinner on one side, and then you become a child of God on the other side, or children of light. You know. Um, so, anyways, they're in this they're in this whole boat together, and way back in the back, they and the boat's filling up with water, and they're oh my God, shit fire, man! And then they notice in the back there. Jesus, Jesus is asleep on the pillow. Okay, so that's pretty. They didn't even know we was there. That's how the story works out, you know. So, wow, this is our Savior. This is the third phase coming in because, you know, we meet Jesus in the air. All right, so what does he do? You know, the wind is howling outside. The rain is pushing into the boat. They're about to sink. The whole world is about to fall apart. Oh, my God. Where's Jesus? Where's our teacher at? <gasps> there he is. He's back there asleep. Jesus. He wakes him up and says, Teacher, teacher, do you care that we die? That we perish out here? And Jesus rose up. You know, this is the he rose up now that they met Jesus. This is in the air now. Okay, this is where in the theta frequency. Now, what happens is, is Jesus, like, had down no face. But he doesn't say that to him. He stands up and he rebukes the wind and the, and, the, and the sea. And everything came down. This is, this is what came against them as the sea. And he stopped this. This is the fourth now. He's now going all the way up. This is the fire side. This is the, the when you come to the top of the mountain and you now getting this gift this this gift from him who is this guy who can rebuke the wind even you know yesterday when, earlier it was like who is this guy that can you know scare off the demons you know who's this guy who who can clear everyone out of the temple who could who is this well that guy is you you're the priest, you're the head priest, the only one that's allowed to go inside the temple and fix things up, you know, you're the head priest, that's kind of cool, so you see that this is a, this is an interesting one where you're going across the water and that's the phases of consciousness and it's also how you raise your level up here, so it's just a, a, a really wonderful story, it's have you no faith, you know, it's, the, it's just the whole idea that, you know, I always wondered, how is it they didn't know that Jesus was in there all the time, you know? <clears throat> Listen, there's a story over one of the Bibles, one of the parts of the Bible's uh, books that didn't make the cut. <clears throat> I think it was in the Acts of Thomas, but the book of, the book of Thomas, the Acts of John. These are people that are close to him and stuff like that that didn't make it. Because, you know, they talk about him saying, you know, there was this one time that they were out in the water and they looked ashore and they saw their master standing there. And between the two of them, the conversation was, was I saw a young man, you know, I saw a young man back, you know, calling for us or doing whatever. And the other one says, you know, that's what you saw? I see, I see an older man with beard, what have you, you know, a much, much aged man. And they were looking at the same guy. And so, whenever they made it to shore, they were really interested into seeing his footprints on the sand and found none. So these are really wonderful little stories. <laughs> they're, they're very mystical stories, but that's why they didn't make it in this. I mean, you're lucky you got Jesus being woke up on a pillow in the back of a sinking ship that no one ever even noticed he was there in the first place. Could you imagine that? Pretty big ship. Pretty big ship. And of course we know that the one with uh, Noah, Gary Noah and his family, 
makes it all the way up to the top of the mountain. He gets drunk off the new wine, and his, his sons, the lower minds, see him and are embarrassed. You know, <gasps> my dad, my dad is naked. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of retarded too. You know. But, you know, this is the new wine. This is what was pitted against who is done, you know. And in his case, he was tired of the world around him. The entire world was to, to him was just polluted. And what can I do to save myself? What can I do amongst all of this? God says, you know, you're the only worthy one of them all. You know, how many times does he say that along here, you know? You're the only one, and these these people jam usually decrepit ones, <coughs> and then have this way of flipping over to the nicer side. <coughs> Let me tell you, people use that in the clergy. They use it to hide their angry, angry self. Do you think that they're going inside, evoking this single eye, and cleaning their self out from the inside, getting rid of the garbage, this puke? putrid stench of the death inside people that makes them stink, makes them awful, you know. Ugh. Anyways, best to you guys, alright. Uh, this is the God's honest truth when it comes to reading the Bible. I wonder if anyone has ever, ever read the Bible to you correctly before. And this is not just my opinion. It's the God's honest truth. You understand that? I can stand behind that. Best to you guys. Have a good evening. <laughs> I think I'm going to go and have a drink. <laughs>